Okay, yep. this is the video I promised. We're back with finishing up the uh, 6JZ6 amplifier. And uh, I said I was going to talk about a couple things uh, that I thought about adding to make it a little, uh, give it super mod and a tuned input. This was the schematic we started with. And we originally loaded and tuned it and got the uh, Pi network going. It ended up with 14 turns, 16 gauge wire, one half inch inside diameter. And uh, the cheater on this is the half inch was uh, <laughs> simply a double uh, A battery. This is why I wrapped the wire around and that measured a half inch. Um, as the tune and load caps ended up, I disconnected everything from them and just measured them with a cap checker. The plate measured 30 picofarad and the load measured 207 picofarad. Okay, and that brings us up to this is now the complete amp as you see it, the whole thing. I get that all that. I apologize for the camera video, but I need a bigger bench. <laughs> I can't get everything in view. Uh, key and circuit, the uh, high and low super mod, where I talked about the uh, removing the ground from the control grid and the screen grid, keeping them tied together, but uh, feeding them through a, a capacitor and a, a 1.5k resistor to ground is what we ended up with and shorted this is the normal circuit and uh, I think before before I put the tuned input circuit in which is this thing right here well that was a chore too for one tube there's just a little bit of difference two tubes is almost perfect with just a little bit of SWR but when I actually measured it, I had almost a, a 3 to 1 SWR with just one tube. So it did need to be matched or brought up to 50 ohms. Um, what, uh, oh, um, normally this switch is closed. I, the only one I could find is an open switch, but closed, it's high power. And uh, now with the tuned input circuit, I get about 50 watts output out of one little tube. So a pair of these tubes would uh, make a pretty easy 100 watts. So I'll get the power supply turned on here and we'll show you what I got going. The one problem with the uh, this little circuit is it does mess with if you have it on high and you get your SWR tuned input tuned correctly it will mess with it pretty badly it uh, it made the SWR go go up quite high and I think I got it down to almost 1.5 yeah just right at 1.5 you can see it in the meter and here we're reading a little over 50 watts Hello, hello, but not a whole lot of swing. But now, this is a switch I was telling you about. Hello, hello, hello. But see what it does to the SWR? <laughs> it messes with it pretty bad. On high, it's okay. But yeah, you could retune that. You get it down there under a two. Hello. But that's what I'm talking about. Check. Allo. Allo. Pretty good swing there. From about 10. Allo. Allo. Almost 20 watts. Check. Check. Allo. Allo. I got to watch my dummy load because it's, it's only a... 30 watt dummy load so I'm out doing it a little bit but yeah 50 watts ain't too bad Oop.
get the SWR down. There we go. Now we got our 50 watts back. So yeah, there you go. <clears throat> now, the next fun thing here, um, <clears throat> I got an email from a viewer and he was asking about uh, some LF6s. Any of the LF6s will uh, would work. They do have a couple uh, pins that are different. Um, let's see. What's the easiest one to look at here? I guess I'll go back to this original one. Uh, on the LF6, they come over here and there's, uh, I think, pin 9. Boy, now I wish I had the other chart out. I don't have it right in front of me, but I know these are connected through two pins on each side on the LF. The KDs and the rest of them uh, don't have that. So you don't have to worry. <coughs> uh, you just ground the pins on one side of the tube and you're fine. The JZ has it on pin 10. The suppressor is grounded on pin 10. That's the one you leave grounded if you put the swing kit in. The neat part I'm going to try is I have um, the 6KN6. I, no, it does show the 42KN6. Uh, same setup. We look 1 and 12's filaments. 1 and 12's a filament. Um, pin 10 is the uh, suppressor grid again, just like it is here. Uh, pins 3, 4, and 5 you would ground. 3, 4, and 5. And pin 10. Uh, the tube fits in there. Uh, the only thing, I've got a bunch of the 42 KN6's. Uh, grab one here. They're uh, same as a KD6, basic look to them, but they need 42 volts of filament voltage. Now I picked these things up off of eBay a couple of years ago when not many people were looking at the tubes <laughs> and I picked them, they're like $5 plus shipping. Uh, I found uh, several of them in uh, sets of three for 12 bucks with shipping. I grabbed those up real quick. So I've got a stock of those. Um, so yeah, I could take uh, four of these and come up with uh, probably three to four hundred watts. Pretty easy. But the neat thing here, I've made room on this one and I'll in the next video I'll fit this thing in here reload it and we'll see. See that'll just go right in there. I've got enough room to just slide that right in. And we'll see how far we are off. I doubt that I'll have to do too much to the coil. I might have to remove one turn because this is going to be a little uh, different on the plate. Let's see if this one shows it. Uh, do we have load? Plate ohms yeah okay it's listed as plate resistance you see over here it's 4,000 ohms so when you're doing the dummy load for your dry tuning you'd have to put a 4,000 ohm resistor from here to ground you could leave the tube hooked up if you want but you don't need to put the filament on it and you don't need high voltage that's one thing I want to stress about that. You can leave all the tube parts unhooked. The only thing you need in there in the circuit is the uh, 4000 ohm uh, from your tuning cap to ground. And that substitutes the tube as if it were in the circuit. So 4000 ohms. So likewise, right along with that, if you was going to use two of these tubes, 
that 4,000 ohms would then be 2,000 ohms. 2,000 ohms is what you're looking at with two tubes. So it lowers the plate resistance by half if you got two. So 2,000 ohms if you wanted a pair of them in the circuit. A pair of these uh, would give a nice 100, 150 watts. Real easy with a 5 watt drive. Now later as we go on through in upcoming video I will build an amp and use that tube in a grid driven circuit. In other words the uh, the screen will have voltage on it the grid, the control grid will have bias uh, the suppressor grid will be grounded of course and it'll have a Pi network tuned input so that I can zero out the SWR clear to a one to one and um, I'll show you how to control the output of the tube with just changing the screen voltage. Uh, when you build your screen supply you just have a step of uh, resistors oh um, maybe 5k and have three or four of them in a string and then you just select uh, anywhere in that string you have them in series and so you select uh, one from ground it would be your lowest voltage uh, your lowest wattage output and then the next one up could be hooked to stage number two and the next one up could be stage number three so high medium and low or whatever you want whatever you've got switched for you just string those resistors in a, in a row and you're dividing the voltage down through those uh, 5k resistors and uh, you'll end up with being able to control screen or control the RF output with them. So that's pretty much it. I'll come back in the next video. I'll uh, put that tube in here and we'll see what we uh, what we come up with. And uh, it might work with this same load. Oh, I was going to call your attention to something. That's right. Um, in the original schematic where there's two tubes and no tuned input uh, that's in the, okay we have just one choke right here and this choke is uh, pretty much out of the circuit it the uh, it's not a a inductance that's going to bother 27 megs but what happens when the relay closes, see these tubes are floating, the cathodes are floating above ground and that essentially shuts the tubes off when the cathodes are above, uh, above ground. But when the relay closes, that current path comes through the relay, comes to the, uh, through the choke and to ground. Uh, this schematic was drawn wrong because I forgot uh, sometimes some CB radios may have a choke in the radio to ground and that would uh, tend to affect this one so you'd want to make sure you had full control of it so <clears throat> in the schematic I've drawn I put a blocking cap in here so that ignores anything that's going on over at the radio and the tricky thing that had to be added this coil absolutely would not SWR out with it with the coil floating above ground. I tried to put a couple O1 caps to ground to leave it uh, float, um, but it, it wouldn't have it. Uh, I could get maybe a, a two SWR, uh, maybe a, a one eight SWR, but it would not go any lower. This had to be uh, soldered to ground. It ended up being a three turn coil tapped at two turns and what I did there's uh, coming in from the relay a capacitor went to the tap from the for the radio and then the tube had its capacitor just soldered right to the top of this variable cap right here this little choke is the little secret trick it guides the DC path across the choke and over to the relay and waits 
to be for the, for the relay to close in order to turn the tube on. If you didn't use that and you didn't use this cap and this cathode was hooked to ground all the time, your tube would be sitting there cooking. It was, would be no way to turn it off. You would have to then use another relay and maybe turn the uh, high voltage on and off, which that's kind of a hard thing to do and it's uh, it's rough on contacts because there's a lot of uh, arcing when the points make together. There's quite a bit of a little flash that happens in the relays, even if you have them quenched with like a capacitor across them. So this is the easiest way to do it without adding an extra contact or relay. It just with a choke to ground here, it feeds up through this way. And again, this ignores RF. Uh, RF don't go through it. It's just the DC voltage, the current from the tube, following across the choke, going to the relay. And then when the relay switches, it'll conduct that to ground. But that's, that was the, the odd trick there. Uh, okay, I think I've covered everything. Oh, and a standby operate switch. <clears throat> I didn't hook that in here. Uh, I just turned the power supply on and that takes care of the 24 volt for the relay. So if you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email. And I'll send you the new schematic if you want it. It's a JPEG. Um, I think it's a 120K, maybe a little less, maybe 90K. I've done some revi several re revisions on it to get everything corrected. Um, and a word on that. Uh, it's real simple. I use what's called PC paint. Uh, I'm familiar with it. It's I've gotten used to drawing with it. I couldn't afford any of the schematic drawing programs. So I found that anytime you can get something into a JPEG, you can take it into PC Paint and work with it. Uh, change it. Uh, section it. Draw it. Like it's got a little uh, box and you can draw your cursor around it and just take that whole thing and move it somewhere else. Or you draw your lines. Uh, it has a thing where you can select the width of the line you want to draw. And it even does this little... You can't draw an angle line. It has this weird thing where it tries to make it zigzag and jagged. But if you just keep everything with square corners, the, the, esti or the uh, uh, schematic will come out really straight and clean. Uh, and what I do is I download a PDF... I use a site that's online. It's, it's nothing you have to download. It's called pdf to imagecom So you first download a PDF that you want to turn into a JPEG. You go to pdf to imagecom It's got a tab and it says upload file. You click on that. It uh, opens your uh, folder. You go select the folder you want to uh, upload. You click on that and it says open. And then there's a little dialog box about the middle of the screen uh, over on the left. And it says um, uploading and it gives a percentage of activity. And then when it gets done, it'll say converting. And when it's all done, it'll say download file click on that. Don't click on anything else that's on that screen because there's a bunch of little uh, potholes in there that will little snag you. They're just advertisements and uh, gotchas. Just ignore them. Uh, just stay with the program, the part of it that has the activity thing. That's the only one you need to click on when you download your file. And uh, But then you can draw with that. Uh, the version of Windows I have is Vista. It still works. I'm using a browser called Opera. And Opera is pretty simple. It, uh, I don't like, uh, the, it's small. It's uh, simple. 
and it's a pretty small size. I was going to download Chrome or uh, what was the other one out there? Uh, uh, I think Chrome, I guess Chrome was, and I, it was like one point some gigabyte in size. And I looked at the uh, Opera, I think it's 120 megabytes. It's just a small program, real simple. It blocks ads, it saves your passwords, you can erase them, delete them, you can delete uh, browsing history, it's in the settings. It's uh, pretty simple. And if you, uh, if you have any questions on that, uh, just like I say, shoot me an email and I'll, uh, I'll maybe answer. Uh, if there's enough requests for it, maybe I guess what I could do is uh, sit down and do a video of how to use the uh, PDF the image and then maybe a little uh, drawing tutorial uh, where I could get the camera set up and let it watch the screen while I uh, do some drawing. Maybe that would work. So if you want something like that, leave it in the comments. Or send me an email. Let me know. Um, if you want to follow along and see more of these linear uh, videos, because I'm going to be, uh, as we go along, I'll get larger and larger amps. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, hit the like button if you think this was uh, information you can use. And uh, we appreciate uh, sharing if you would. So thank you, and we'll see you in the next video. And I'll let you know how that uh, 42 N KN6 works, and I'll let you. We'll see it on the watch on the watt meter and uh, see how much power it puts out.